Hi there, my darlings. Today we're going to be using the Star Codes Astro Oracle to set the theme for the collective and the message that comes with it. We're going to be using the Ancestral Path Tarot for the actual reading. And we're going to be using the Rider Waite Smith for the overall clarifying cards, okay? And let's go ahead. The cards have already been shuffled, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I just want to remind you guys, because it keeps coming up. I know it's a new change, so I'm going to remind you. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays is for the general public. Every day, the subscribers get a collective, but that's because they have subscribed. And they are supporting me. They, they're, I know not everybody can afford it, and I understand that. But those who can and are doing it... I appreciate them and that's why I'm doing more for them because they deserve it so it no hard feelings but this is <clears throat> the law of giving and receiving right you give something you receive something in return okay so let's get started what is the theme for this collective oh you know what's interesting that when I was putting the cards up the previous collective the card that came out this one was the one that was underneath the deck I only pulled one so you know what? Let's look at what's underneath the deck. Cancer, immerse, and debilitated discomfort. Let's use both of them. All right. <clears throat> four and 14. So number four, oops. <laughs> My um, Frappuccino kind of drizzled water on it. Okay, so number four or five could be important to somebody or 14. So let's see, Cancer, and I'm going to read the little tidbit it gives about astrology because, you know, that way you guys can learn a little bit. Cancer is symbolized by a crab who asks us to dive deep into the sea of emotion and come back home again. The crab always carries its protective shell, however. This moon-ruled cardinal water sign signifies nutrition in and out of the body and is connected to the breasts and stomach. The sun shines here June 21st to July 22nd action be the emotional leader and connect with the parent archetype if you're in need of parenting yourself reach out to the divine mother and father to the earth beneath the sky above and feel held once you feel fed by spirit it becomes easier to accept the ordinary human limitations of the people around you if you're called to parent others in this situation whether in love or work do so with a balanced approach of honest feedback and support and self-care nurture without enabling model what you want others to do Nourish the connections with your chosen family and tribe. Nourish bodies, gardens, communities, and your temple's hearth. Hearth. Cancer calls us to deepen our relationships to home, but not to get stuck in this protective shell. If you need more out of life, you'll have to leave this safety to find what you need. Find a home base or a safe place within your soul, and from that safety, be ready to brave exploration and risk caring with all your heart. Challenge. Crabs are hard on the outside, but soft and squishy on the inside. Remember that the very defenses you think will keep you safe may actually keep important people out. Soften your shell. You have a backbone and are not protected solely by an exoskeleton. Gift. Be aware of the psychic pool in which you float. If you feel tossed by the waves or battered by the anxiety of those around you, dive down deeper and find the calm below. Float in the ocean of collective consciousness and feel cradled, nurtured by the divine mother, by the divine mother fed and cuddled. Mm. Interesting message. Okay, let's look at debilitated. <clears throat> Discomfort number 14. All right, so this one says, if you put a well-organized city dweller deep in the wild woods, they'd be accidentally debilitated, out of their element and pushed to live up to their potential. They may be uncomfortable, but the situation offers a chance to stretch further and develop their soul. The same goes for a planet in a sign or placement that's awkward with its nature. For example, Mercury is the least mercurial when it's in Pisces, opposite the sign of Virgo, which it rules. Here, Mercury can bestow a great mind, but in an intuitive, integrative, imaginative way, not a mind to escape in purely intellectual pursuits. Action. This time, you are the invaluable sidekick. This is not your game, but you have a lot to contribute nonetheless, and the long-term benefits will be worth your efforts. Learn and listen rather than assert yourself in your opinions. Use your strength and leadership skills to support and center another person or project. 
Pass the ball to someone who is in position to run with it. Back up a leader. Do the work behind the scenes and bolster the team. If you're not ready to do this work, you can pass that ball and leave the field. But consider redefining your idea of success. Stay here and you can grow needed skills, expand your repertoire and contacts, and build up trust among others who can help you in the future. Everything you learn, all the contacts you make, prepare you for when it's your turn. Challenge. Whether you're an artist among the engineers or a linebacker among the ballerinas, you may struggle to apply your talents in this situation. In these moments, it's easy to slip into self-pity and self-doubt. Gift. You are being challenged to grow in ways you can't predict. You are being asked to diversify, stretch, and strengthen your weak muscles. Only you can decide if it's time to take that challenge, but this experience also encourages you to love yourself in the quiet moments and to appreciate what you bring to the table even when nobody else notices. Hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so let's keep these messages in mind. And today we're going to use almost all because these cards are big. <laughs> <sighs> These have already been shuffled, so let's get to it. Let's see how it applies to our collective. <clears throat> Those two messages we read. Tell us about today's collective. We start off with the three of sacred circles. Okay. The hermit. <clears throat> the sun. Temperance. Four of sacred circles. Okay. The king of swords. The ten of swords. Mm. The two of swords. priestess mm -hmm. the magician the ten of cups Ooh. one more please and the ace of sacred circles all right <clears throat> let's look at the bottom of the deck the Five of Swords, the Princess of Staves, the Hierophant, Five of Staves, Four of Cups, Seven of Sacred Circles, Prince of Swords. Hmm. I'm actually going to read the message that goes with this one because in this deck, they have different messages. The Five of Swords is a little different than the normal Five of Swords. And I don't know why I feel drawn to read the message. So let's read the message. This one says, Idealism, youthful enthusiasm, even naivete. A time of learning, absorbing, and training. Making a commitment to an ethos or an organization. Alternatively, blind faith and unquestioning loyalty. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. So... See, I told you this is very different than the usual Five of Swords. This is... <sighs> Somebody is in a training position because they feel debilitated. They're in a place of discomfort. They may be learning a new, um, a new skill. They're learning something new because Princess of Staves, this is the energy, this is the Page of Wands. So it's basically the energy of stepping out of your comfort zone. Look at the way the dog is looking at us. Like, what you looking at, bitch? <laughs> Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is about stepping out of your comfort zone, exploring, um, expanding your horizons. And there's a teacher here, but this is not your usual Hierophant. In this deck, this is the Oracle of Delphi. So, and again, the Five of Staves, which is the Five of Wands, this is not about challenging. It's about negotiation. It's about teamwork. And someone here doesn't want that. So, okay, here's what I'm getting so far off of the Oracle cards and this that we've seen. And I haven't even started here. Somebody's out of their element. They are 
They are being challenged to learn something new. They're being challenged to step out of their comfort zone. Possibly um, cancer energy may be prevalent. Doesn't have to be. But this could be somebody who maybe is very used to a certain lifestyle, a certain uh, speed, a certain belief system. And they're learning something new, which makes them feel like a fish out of water. But they're not just any ordinary fish. They're the type of fish that carries water in its gills. So it won't die, but they're very uncomfortable. Because three of sacred circles, it's like they're barely building something up. And with the hermit here and the high priestess, the magician, there's somebody here that's going to teach them, somebody who's an expert. But that would mean, I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place. I like going in order, but right now I'm like going, it would mean leaving behind some belief system, some way of seeing things. Maybe they are the king of swords and they're usually the expert. They're usually the, the person that has the answers. But in this case, in this case, they feel like they, they're lost. This is new. It may, it may even be taking their ego down a bit. Take it down a few notches. The Four of Sacred Circles. See, I usually read that like the Four of Pentacles, but right now this is telling me, I feel like there's a very spiritual message because I usually don't read the messages from these cards because <clears throat> it just goes with the flow naturally. But this time around, I'm feeling drawn to read the Four of Sacred Circles. <clears throat> the Four says the home environment as a basis for life's experiences creating harmony in one's home or work environment, setting things in motion, following through preparation, beginning phase of a task or pro I'm telling you, beginning phase of a task or project. Somebody here is opening up to something new and they feel like a linebacker and a group of ballerinas <laughs> or an artist in the middle of a bunch of engineers. They feel completely out of place, but there is a, some sort of divine union here. There's a coming together of energies. They're meant to support somebody. <clears throat> In fact, the energy I'm getting, the, and I just have to say this, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to put anybody down because I know some of y'all get really triggered. <clears throat> Usually the masculine takes the lead in a lot of things, right? And I feel like the reason this came out is because cancer energy is the mother. It's the moon. The sun is the masculine. Somebody here is used to being the sun. Somebody's used to taking the lead. And they're uncomfortable because right now they're being asked to take a back seat. To let the moon be the focal point. Let the moon or the mother or the feminine be the leader support the feminine let's see let's 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 start looking because there's there's a lot here clarify five of swords <clears throat> knight of cups the hanged man <laughs> queen of cups i told you Look at that. I told you, I told you, I told you, the magician. This this could even be that there's a difference in age. It won't be much because the Knight of Cups is still, you know, close to the Queen. It's not like it's a page. But I feel like this Queen of Cups is the one right now that is being, I don't know how to explain it. Like she's meant to take the lead on something. Right now, they're, they're her support. Because <clears throat> with the hanged man, this is, again, it's uncomfortable because it's like they're hanging upside down. They're having to see the world from a very different perspective. But at the same time, look at how they're looking at each other. Like a team. I walk your way, you walk mine. We meet in the middle. Meet that old Georgia pine. <laughs> Um, there's some meeting in the middle, but let's, let's keep going because there's something here. Look, there's that five of wands. There's something here, although 
it's new, it's different. It's like, at the same time, it's a challenge that the masculine is rising. They're rising to the challenge. Clarify three of sacred circles. <clears throat> there, what did I say? Look at that, the moon. I'm telling you. Clarify three of sacred circles. <laughs> Ooh, 10 of swords. Oh, oh, guys, this is so interesting. Okay. So the, C the three of sacred circles, you know how it represents the three of pentacles, right? And the three of pentacles can represent our uh, foundation, our home. In fact, hold on, let me read, because remember, this one has a different meaning. This is talking about our home base. Let's see what the three of sacred circles says. The three of sacred circles is a craft is mastered when one, the body, two, the materials, and three, the idea all become one. Ethics and values are consonant with one's lifestyle. Work reflects values, balance between work, social, family, and spiritual responsibilities. Mm. Okay. So somebody here is having to, the reason I brought that up is because Somebody's here is having to balance out their history with their present tense. The moon, Cancerian energy, is also the home, our foundation, our roots. So somebody here, whoever this masculine is, they have had, uh, the moon rules the subconscious. They have had experiences with either their mother or feminine energy in general that have left them feeling betrayed, have left them feeling abandoned, have left them feeling hurt, stabbed in the back. And it creates really, um, like anytime they have to come in, into investing energy into a feminine or a uh, feminine energy of any sort not just a woman but like home commitment things that have to do with cancerian energy they're like uh, i don't know i don't know and somehow something about this is meant to help this person grow it's meant to help this person stretch so they're feeling debilitated they're feeling in, in discomfort because they're being put in a place where they are uncomfortable because they're meant to explore it <clears throat> They're meant to heal that. Immerse comes with cancer. They're meant to sink into it. And what's interesting is that cancerian energy is water energy, right? Look at this king of swords. He's like, only his feet are in the water. And this is immerse. It's like this king of swords is being pulled into the ocean. It's going to be uncomfortable, especially if they're used to walking only, you know, ankle deep. But something about this is going to help them grow. Clarify the Hermit. Clarify the Hermit. The world, Two of Swords again. Clarify the Hermit. Oh, oh, that was a lot of cards. Okay. Let's scoot these up. Six of Swords. The Eight of Swords. That's a lot of Swords. Six of Pentacles, the Sun. Strength and Four of Pentacles. Yeah, this definitely has to do with family. Um, it keeps, look, Eight of Wands again. <coughs> it keeps being highlighted. Because here we have the Three of Pentacles with the Seven of Pentacles. And here we have the Six of Pentacles with the Four of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles has come up twice, just in the first two cards. And the Ten of Pentacles is our family, our legacy, the structure we were raised around. And here we've got Saturn energy. So somebody here is, with the Hermit, they're meant to possibly go through a dark night of the soul, because that would definitely be uncomfortable. Um, or they're meant to just gain wisdom. But Two of Swords, you see how in this one their back is turned? <laughs> and in this one they're blindfolded and they're crossing the swords. It's like somebody here is like, nope, 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 nope. nope. 
they're trying to stay away from <clears throat> whatever it is that's going to help them heal this. They're trying to move away from it, but moving away from it puts them in the eight. The two and the six puts them in the eight. And the eight and the two puts them in the ten. It's just going to keep coming back around. Because with the world card, this is a cycle that needs to be addressed. This is a cycle that needs to be healed. This needs to be looked at, explored. This is something worth investing in. Now with the sun card, whatever is in the dark, whatever is in the subconscious needs to be illuminated. Because our shadow side, which the moon holds, holds all of the things that we are taught is bad, right? It holds our anger, our rage, our shame, our guilt, but it also holds our power. It also holds our creativity, our sense of identity, our pleasure. So tapping into the shadow, as scary as it is, because it feels that way, because we're told that that's forbidden, so it's terrifying to approach it, also holds our inner strength. And this person may be struggling to understand that because they're like, nope, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. But this is meant to happen. With the hermit here, this is meant to happen. This is to heal a very prominent wound in this person's psyche. So this could be somebody who is starting uh, breath work. They could start meditation, but this definitely feels like shadow work. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a shadow worker. Clarify the sun card. The Empress, the Justice card. Clarify the sun. Six of Cups. See, King of Wands. This king has shown up as two kings now. King of Swords, King of Wands. And the thing is, I feel like this is a little intimidating for them because a king of wands is usually the leader. A king of wands is usually the person that everybody else comes to when a decision needs to be made, when, um, when somebody needs guidance, when somebody needs direction, especially the king of swords. This is the person you come to for advice, for um, instructions. They are the expert. So having to defer this, all this masculine energy, having to come to an empress, a high priestess, for guidance, <clears throat> it's almost like they feel very out of their element. The thing about this is the empress is not going to emasculate them. She's not here to humiliate them. She's not here to tell them, that's right, I'm going to have my foot on your throat, bitch. That's not who she is. She would never. But she does represent truth, justice, fairness, equality, balance. And if they are out of balance, like let, this may be somebody who's hyper-masculine. <clears throat> they don't allow their, their feminine energy to come through because they think that that's bad, that's stupid. Men shouldn't be feminine. Which of course means that that's what they need to heal, the feminine side. Because they see it as a weakness. They see it as... <sighs> Oh, that's, you know, <clears throat> only women should have feelings. Only women should go to therapy. Only women should be vulnerable. That's not true. So the universe is aligning them with a soulmate. And this soulmate may come in the form of a lover. This soulmate may come in the form of a healer. This soulmate may come in the form of a friend, a mentor. But this feminine is now in the position of the sun. And this king is meant, look, there he is, king of wands, king of swords. They're meant to learn from her. And again, it's uncomfortable, but this is to stretch a muscle that they don't use, which is their heart. Clarify temperance. Not their boner that men are so used to using. <laughs> oh, shit. See, that one came out reversed. Temperance is the queen of swords reversed. Clarify temperance.
Ace of Wands, Clarified Temperance, Star, and Seven of Wands. Hmm. See, I love when Spirit gives us different stories like this because it's, a, it's very refreshing for me to not always be in the same story. This is a masculine that keeps encountering, I'm just going to say, <clears throat> very harsh, cynical, pessimistic, and jaded women. But part of the reason that they do that is because they have been trained by whoever raised them, whoever gave them this impression that women are, this is who women are supposed to be. That's just the feminine nature. The Ace of Wands, they're naturally attracted to that because they believe that this is the feminine nature. They don't understand the concept of femininity being open, being honest, being healing, sharing knowledge. So whoever this empress is, immediately they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Because they feel like that's that's weird. That's that's weird. That's not normal. Well temperance means they're they're slowly coming to terms with maybe uh, the way I was raised is it normal because this empress seems to be so natural at being loving at being vulnerable and open and healing it seems to just roll off of her is my attraction towards you know bitchy women <laughs> Is that not natural? So they're starting to question it. They're starting to realize, because, you know, being around this type of feminine doesn't really help my self-esteem, doesn't really help my value, my sense of worth. I feel worthless, and these feminines just kind of reinforce that, because this is probably someone who had a terrible mother or mother figure. And I'm not here to rag on mothers, because I know for the most part, mothers are not this way. But in this particular storyline, this is not somebody who had a nurturing, caring mother figure. <clears throat> Clarify the four of sacred circles. Look at that. The emperor. Clarify the four of sacred circles. Page of Swords, Queen of Wands reversed. Again. The Ace of Swords. <sighs> this Emperor, because they are an Emperor now. They showed up. This is somebody who's very in touch with their masculine energy. They have worked really hard to embody all of the kings, all of the masculine traits. They are knowledgeable, they are educated, they are passionate, they are kind, they are compassionate, but they believe that they are in tune with their mass, with their uh, feminine energy. But they keep attracting Queen of Swords reversed, Queen of Wands reversed. Why? Because with the Page of Swords reversed, they have not opened their mind up to the possibility that this is not normal. That a woman being a tyrant, a woman being abusive, is not normal. In fact, nobody should be abusive. Not a man, not a woman. Gender is irrelevant when it comes to this type of energy. The Queen of Wands reversed, where the Queen of Swords reversed is somebody who's jaded, pessimistic, uh, critical, harsh, mean, um... Cynical, did I say that already? <laughs> Let's say that twice, because that's what that stands for. Queen of Wands reversed is somebody who's demanding, somebody who literally has their foot on your neck, maybe, literally. Um, 
somebody who is <sighs> how do I put this? The word bitch is coming to mind, but there's so much more because we can say that in a playful way, but this is like somebody who's a genuine bitch. <laughs> they are, they're a tyrant, they're a bully. They take pleasure in crushing others. And this is, remember this deck, this is the card of this is their foundation. So they could have been raised around a masculine who was a pretty calm, balanced masculine and the feminine around them was not. And they accepted this as this is just, this is just the way life is. This is how the masculine should be and this is how the feminine should be. But that's not true. <clears throat> and with the Page of Swords, they're, they're realizing there's some clarity coming through about have I been putting genders in a box and how they should be or maybe not genders but roles energies have i been putting the feminine energy in this box and the masculine energy in this box because now they've met this empress and see what people forget is that a divine feminine is a mix of yin and yang she has divine masculine energy it doesn't rule her because she's not a divine masculine She's a divine feminine, but she knows how to step into the divine masculine energy when needed. A divine masculine, to be whole and complete, needs to be able to heal the divine feminine within themselves. Otherwise, they won't recognize a divine feminine when they see her. Because here they are with the Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands, that's not a match for an emperor. But they think it was a match. They were attracted to this. They were drawn to this. They found it hot. There's a lot of lusty energy here. Ace of Wands, lovers. And when they meet this, when they meet this Empress, they're stunned. There's the energy of what? What is this? What? What's this? What kind of? Almost like, <laughs> almost like, um, <clears throat> like some foreign specimen, like a new species that they encountered. I'm getting the image of somebody who's poking and prodding something like, what is this? Is it real? What is it? <laughs> what do you feed it? Do you eat it? <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's look at the King of Swords. And yet somehow they feel that this otherworldly being is above them in some way. Like they need to learn from this person. And that makes them uncomfortable because they thought that they were they were pretty high up there. Clarify King of Swords. Yeah, look at them. When they first encountered this Divine Feminine, they were like, no way, that's not, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is, but it's gotta be fake. It's gotta be a trick. It's got, it, because this person had no concept of what a divine feminine is actually supposed to be. So whether this person comes in as, whatever they come in as, they ran. Chariot energy is like, it's especially with these, it's like somebody getting into their car, nope, driving away. It's like encountering an alien, somebody getting in their car saying, no, not today, I've got too much shit to do, I'm leaving, this is not normal, and they just drive off. Except, except this is a divine feminine they encountered. But with temperance, <clears throat> it had to take time. Because remember, temperance energy, when you temper something, like, um, you know, the French creams that they make, you have to mix um, hot milk with egg. You have to temper it, right? Because if you put all the egg in, it'll cook and it'll curdle. It'll be disgusting. So you have to add little by little for it to slowly rise, raise the temperature. So it's like this initial shock, they ran. They were like, nope. And little by little, divinity, because these are this is an angel, divinity was like dropping downloads into their consciousness. Even if they kept saying, no, 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 no. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but that's not divine feminine. The universe is like, here's another little drop of 
egg <laughs> into the hot milk. Here's another little drop of egg until the temperature was raised. Ten of Swords. Now they're they're still in denial. I feel like they're in denial, but it's about to end. They're trying to be like, no, 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 there's no way. You don't understand. There's no way. But there is a way because this exists. This is what it is. This is the real deal. Clarify Ten of Swords. Look at that. Ten of Cups reversed. I was just thinking that. Oof. I should have said it out loud. Because the reason this person clarified Ten of Swords is so resistant to the idea of this being a divine feminine, it means that this person is most likely surrounded by women like this. And they love these women, either as partners, as friends, as family members. So to accept that this is the divine feminine, not this, they feel almost like they're betraying their family or the people close to them. Because it means that that this is not the Divine Feminine. Clarify Ten of Swords. And look at the Ten of Cups reversed. With the Five of Swords. And remember what it said. Remember, what did the Five of Swords say? When it's... When it's um, Oh, the what's coming to mind is the expression that it said at the, at the last. It said, it can be idealism, youthful enthusiasm, even naivete, a time of learning, absorbing, and training, making a commitment to an ethos or organization. Alternately, it can represent blind faith and unquestioning loyalty. Somebody here was giving their loyalty to a feminine that wasn't the divine feminine. And they've fought this. They have fought this tooth and nail. They have been like, no, 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 no. But it's so appropriate that this is the deck I was drawn to today because do you see? This is a ninja. It's a ninja that put all these swords into this person's back, which means that the universe snuck up on this person. And somehow it made them realize you're acting like you're happy, but you're not. You're pretending everything is fine, but you're lying. And little by little, little by little, downloads came through and downloads came through and downloads came through because maybe this person is meditating. Maybe this person is, they're opening up in some way. They're trying to resist it, but the universe is a ninja. <laughs> And little by little, they realized what I'm proud of, everything I've stood for, because they could they could be married. This could be their mother and their or their sister or their grandmother or the people around them that they adore, and they're realizing they're they're a queen in reverse. They're not they're not the divine feminine, and they 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 feel challenged by it. But at the same time, it's like. I'm tell this is somebody who's definitely in a place of discomfort. They are, if cognitive dissonance was ever in a reading, this is it. Because their whole sense of reality is being challenged. Because they're realizing, and it snuck up on them. It snuck up on them. It's a ninja. It snuck up on them. And they're realizing I was giving my loyalty without question. I thought I was doing the right thing. And now it's like they're realizing I was actually a fool. I was impulsive, I was stupid. And they're hanging on because there's only two swords left. <laughs> we started off with eight and then 10 and now we're down to two. They're holding on to the last little shreds of denial. And like, what if I'm wrong? Please tell me I'm wrong. Please tell me I'm wrong. Please tell me, please tell me I'm wrong. This, this, this is the divine feminine, right? 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 Clarify two of swords.
I think before, because this is coming to me as I shuffle, I'll keep shuffling, but <clears throat> I think before, if you would have asked this emperor to describe this type of queen, they would have said, oh, she's just spicy. <laughs> no, this is called abusive. That's what it's called. There's a difference between someone being spicy and playful and being a bitch. Clarify two of swords. They thought this was hot. They This is somebody who was drawn to this type of woman. Page of Cups, clarify two of swords. They would have said she's just being herself. You know, people just don't understand her. The tower. Mm -mm -mm. Look, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> because we not only have the Empress and the Emperor on the table, we have the High Priestess and the Magician. This is the Divine Masculine, the Divine Feminine, both in the 3D and the 5D. And somebody here is having their mind blown. The universe is blowing their mind. <clears throat> With the little downloads that are coming through. Because it's like, it's like this hot bowl of liquid that the universe knows that if they just pour it on this person, they will cook. They're, they will be overwhelmed. They're not ready for all that. So the universe is patiently spoon feeding it and spoon feeding it and spoon feeding it to this person. But it snuck up on them that now, before you know it, they've realized what the divine feminine is and what it is not. And they're sitting here. <laughs> I, I kind of feel sorry for this person because when our sense of reality is, is shaken this much, we do tend to like freeze. We tend to freeze because everything we know has just been <laughs> obliterated. And it's like this person is in the last, last few moments saying things like, please... <laughs> Please let me hold on to this shred of reality because it's like the root chakra. Because remember, our root chakra is connected to our sense of identity, our, our survival instincts. And when our sense of reality shifts, our root chakra is ungrounded. So this is somebody who feels very disoriented right now. Almost like... You know that, I'm sorry, but I have to use this example. You know in movies where you see where somebody gets the news that somebody they really love just died and it, it shows where it's like sounds are really distant and everything is moving in slow motion and the world seems to slow down. That is when your root chakra takes a hit. And that's what I'm feeling for this person. I kind of feel bad for them because their root chakra has just taken a massive hit because it just finally sank in what the Divine Feminine is and what the Divine Feminine is not. And with the Page of Cups, they feel, they feel like, here I thought I was an emperor and now I feel like I'm learning all over again. I feel like this is this is a whole new territory that I have no idea because this is so foreign, I, I don't know what this is. They're in the middle of trying to come to terms with it. But yeah, somebody, somebody's root chakra took a hit. The good thing is with the fool here, I feel like this person is done denying it. They're done hiding it. Almost like, <clears throat> like let's say, because this is, <laughs> I know, me and my weird analogies, but let's say that this is somebody who modern day is transported back into this era or this era or this era, a totally different era that they're not comfortable in. And initially they were like spending every hour of their waking moments trying to figure out how they got there so that they can go back. And now they've, they're starting to get used to life on a different timeline. At first it felt strange, it felt foreign, it felt scary, they wanted to go home. 
And now they're starting to feel at home in this new strange place, in this new strange version of the world. They're starting to feel like, okay, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. Because the dark side has cookies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to line it up, okay? Let's go to the High Priestess. Clarify High Priestess. <clears throat> Clarify the High Priestess. The Eight of Pentacles. <laughs> Ten of Pentacles. Seven of Swords. <laughs> Four of Swords. Well, look at that. Ace of Sacred Circles. Ace of Pentacles. This is interesting. <laughs> because I, I mentioned before that with the Six of Cups, this, this Divine Feminine showed up as a soulmate. And they were hit with not only emotions that they had never felt before, but information that they had never understood before. And it's just, it was, it was too much. It was overwhelming. Meanwhile, back at the farm, <laughs> the high priestess continues working, continues doing her own thing, but they see her now. You see how she's got the tree of life here. They now see her as I got little tidbits of information and already my mind is blown. What else does she have up her sleeve? <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. <clears throat> Cause they see her working, 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 which means that when they met her, who, who knows how long, cause again, it's a collective, it's gonna apply differently to everyone. But when they met her, they feel like she already had way more knowledge than they did. So I don't know how much time has passed, but now they feel like, well now, She's got more knowledge. <clears throat> Excuse me. But with the Ten of Pentacles, they're now comfortable with the idea of having that knowledge shared with them. They're curious. Now they're, now they're like, what else don't I know? <laughs> but this makes me laugh because it gives me the impression of like, think of her in this position, right? Working, reading, reading her scrolls. There's like somebody who passes next to the pillars. They're trying to take a peek at what she's looking at. <laughs> they don't want to approach her directly yet because I feel like they are, they're cautious of her. They're still wary of her. They now see her as this figure that's larger than life. So they're kind of like um, passing in the background over here behind her. Like over here, what about over here? <laughs> like you'll just, if you were looking at her, you would see them pass over here back. <laughs> and if she were to turn, they would pass over here. <laughs> that's why I was laughing, because that's the impression it gives. Like, what's she, what's she up to over there? What's she got, what's she reading? What's she doing? But every little bit of knowledge that they get from her is helping their healing. They are stepping into their true divine masculine because they continue learning from her. They continue observing her and <clears throat> taking the, the tidbits and, and downloads. And it's, it's somehow opening them up to life because, okay, whoever these feminines are that this masculine was dealing with, whether it's one feminine, whether it's two different feminines, whether it's multiple, the Ace of Wands was here. Yes, there was passion, but it also was very fleeting. It wasn't lasting. The Ace of Pentacles, twice. <sighs> this is solid shit. <laughs> okay, that sounded bad. <clears throat> this is a solid offer. <laughs> this is something real. This is long lasting. This is the, the beans that Jack and the Bean from the Beanstalk got. Because this, this is going to grow all the way that it's nurtured. Let's look at the Magician. Clarify the Magician. Oh, looky, looky, the King of Cups. Clarify the Magician. The Chariot. 
<laughs> King of Pentacles, my goodness. Oh yeah, somebody's learning to manifest. Because see, here's the thing. Here's the real secret, okay? I'm about to share a little secret with y'all. <sighs> to be able to manifest, you need to be in touch with your emotions. Because you, when you visualize things that you want to pull in, you need to be able to feel that emotion as if you've already received it. And if you are blocked off from your emotions in any way, you're going to have one hell of a time manifesting. And now that they're digging into all this new information, they keep showing up as the magician. This magician has showed up over and over and over, and it is on the table. They want to know how to manifest. And they just unlocked one of the secrets. They have to be in tune with their emotions. And now they're like, okay. <laughs> it's like they just got a new set of wheels because what they want now is to be the king of pentacles. They want to have the, the Midas touch. Everything they touch turns to gold. They want to manifest a solid financial life. But not just financial. They want, they want it all. Look at this. They want a fucking castle. They want to be the king with their queen. They want their friends to support them. They want unicorns flying over the rainbows, shitting cupcakes and landing on their kingdom. They want it everything. But this time they want the real thing because before they're realizing the, the happiness that they had was sweet and low happiness. <clears throat> Fake as fuck. Clarify 10 of cups. <laughs> the devil oh my god clarify uh oh magician reversed the hermit mm, 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 mm. there's the other king king of wands oh this is interesting so okay <laughs> they've basically gone as far as they can go without approaching her They've taken all these little tidbits and nuggets that, that the universe has given them, but there's the universe is like, you want to go to the next level? You've got to go to the Empress. You've got to step out of your comfort zone. <laughs> the thing is that now they're so obsessed with this growth. They're so obsessed with this reality that they've now shifted onto this new reality this new timeline they feel like okay i know i can manifest but something's blocking me and all i need is knowledge who's got that knowledge oh that's right the divine feminine they're showing up with the king of wands they're they're full of courage right now <clears throat> nothing's gonna stop them now that's why it's the ace of pentacles because they're going to come forward almost, this might be, this doesn't have to be romantic because it doesn't show romance. It doesn't have to be. This could be a business contract. This could be um, that they're going to accept a new sensei, <laughs> a new master, a new mentor. <clears throat> this is, they could go to this divine feminine for healing. But whatever it is, it's solid. It's real. Let's clarify. Clarify Ace of Sacred Circles. Oh, look at that. Clarify the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah. Clarify Ace of Sacred Circles. Five of Wands. Clarify the Ace of Sacred Circles. And the Two of Wands. With the Page of Wands. Yeah. So again, this is like, I'm curious. I am, I'm curious. I want to know if this can be done. I want to know. I want to know if this is real. I, I don't know what this offer is, but they're coming forward with some offer. Maybe they're coming forward with the challenge of, okay, if this is real, teach me. But this is some sort of, like, they're going to pay her to teach them. They're going to they're gonna take classes. Whatever it is, this is something real. It's something tangible. Because this is a challenge. They don't appreciate that she has knowledge that they don't have. <laughs> they're like, I want to conquer the world, so I'm going to need this knowledge, ma'am. So I don't know under what form they're going to come forward, but they are the support right now. 
only because they're they're in a place that they are uncomfortable but they understand that this is meant to help it's almost like um you know when you're when you're not that I do this a lot but when you have a personal trainer and you're telling them I want to form this muscle and they're going to take you to do <clears throat> routines or exercises that are not your usual and you're really hurting but they're like yeah because you never use that muscle but you want to grow that muscle so get to it <clears throat> this is it this is this emperor this magician in reverse they're they're trying to manifest they feel bl like they're blocked their their progress is only, they can only go so far without her help but there's a reason for that <clears throat> the divine wants them to learn from her they want them to come to the, the sage to the person that has the wisdom to the person that has the knowledge and i think they're about to they're they might send a message before yeah mm -hmm. the wheels are turning <laughs> All right, guys, that's what I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's let's see what happens um, next. <laughs> I look forward to your feedback, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.